in the NFL. The first topic, Jamal Adams was traded from the New York Jets to the Seattle Seahawks, and I was I was initially shocked, right? Two first-round picks for a safety is insane. Michael said, we need to get you some Aggie gear. Absolutely not. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to support my Crimson Tide. That's the way that I do. Is what it is. I'm not saying the Aggies are bad. I'm just saying I do what I do. So, if you want to send something my way, though, I'll wear it. Just saying. Just saying. But with Jamal Adams, two first-rounders for a safety. Not a common thing, right? You could see two first-rounders for a Khalil Mack. Two first-rounders for a quarterback. Two for, you know... Something like that, it, which is a, a position that primarily gets paid insanely well. The key positions, right? Safety is not typically a key position. But when you go and you look at when the Seahawks were their most successful, that is when Cam Chancellor was really doing his thing, Earl Thomas really doing his thing, the Legion of Boom. It wasn't Russell Wilson that won them Super Bowls. It was Russell Wilson not messing things up and the defense being able to stop the other team from scoring. That's when they had their most success. The biggest thing was, if you look at the heat map, Bill Barnwell tweeted this out. Jamal Adams plays a lot like Cam Chancellor. He is a hybrid guy. He he can cover, but he's more of a run-stopping safety, right? Very hybrid type of player, and I think that that's what they were shooting for here. Now, the other side of this is all of the news today on Monday is saying that the Seahawks and Adams both decided not to do an extension yet. They're going to wait until 2021. So after this season is when they are going to decide whether or not they want to give a full extension. Why would you give up two first-rounders for a guy that you don't know whether or not you are going to keep past this season? Now, I'm sure that the Seahawks think that they are incredibly close to a Super Bowl, right? They made it to the playoffs last year. They have been there basically every year. Russell Wilson obviously playing at his peak right now. But my goodness, why would you give up two first-round draft picks for a safety for one season? I just don't understand the thought process behind this. And if you want to, you can always, of course, go back and look at the fact that the Texans... I mean, they got a second-round pick and Doug Johnson for DeAndre Hopkins. That is just absurd. Now, the Texans also gave up two first-round picks for Laramie Tunsil. Key position, right? Plays tackle on the offensive line. That is a key primary position. Giving up two first-round draft picks for a safety, especially one that there is no guarantee of a contract extension coming, just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Now, watch this team go out and win the Super Bowl this year. You know, I could see that. But either way, uh, what the Jets got back in return, Bradley McDougald, not an awful player. Not an awful player. And a guy that, that, for all we know, wants to be there. Michael said, Seahawks gave up way too much, in my opinion. No way I'm betting the franchise on a guy that doesn't touch the ball. Yes. Agreed. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Now, I can understand giving it up for a left tackle, especially if you've already got a guy like Watson That is touching the ball every time, right? You need somebody to protect him. On defense, middle linebacker, somebody that that quarterbacks your defense, that's not what Adams is, though. I don't think he's the quarterback of the defense. So, I mean, obviously, we will see what happens here, but good gracious. Two first-rounders just doesn't seem to make a ton of sense. The Jets, however, got away with highway robbery. You get rid of a guy that doesn't want to be on your team anyway, and you get two first-round draft picks for him, that is unbelievable, unbelievable in today's age, and it just shows the miserable job that Bill O'Brien did in getting rid of DeAndre Hopkins. I mean, a second-round pick for that, it just drives me nuts. Drives me nuts even thinking about it. And not that I'm even a Texans fan, but if I were a Texans fan, whew, you could not ship that guy out of here fast enough. Let's see, Matt said they'll screw up the picks. Yeah, it's the Jets, but the more bites you get at the apple, the better chance you got of getting a good bite, right? Yeah, I mean, you get two first-round picks, 2020 and, or 2021 and 2022. That's a lot of 20s in there, right? But if you have more chances at it, you are more than likely going to hit at least one good player. And you got him way cheaper than it's going to cost to re-sign uh, Jamal Adams, right? 
Let's see. Michael jumps in. The Jets have to make these picks count. Adams wasn't going to make or break their season. It's about Darnold and getting pieces around him. That is exactly right. Exactly right. Again, though, getting rid of him, not that big of a deal. He didn't make or break their team. The Jets got away with robbery here. It's the Seahawks that this doesn't make any sense. Now, at the same time, typically the Seahawks' first-round picks, at the back of the draft, they almost always reach for guys. Now, they are one of the best franchises in the league at developing players. But, I mean, just two years ago, they used one on Richard Penny. You know, last year, they used it on a TCU offensive tackle that just doesn't make any... It, it didn't make any sense. It was a bit of a reach. So, you know, we'll see what uh, what happens here. The Seahawks were the ones that typically just kind of threw away those first-round picks and, and really reached for guys. We'll see about the Jets. We'll see what they end up doing with this. Let's move into... Oh, <laughs> Michael said, how do you feel about Bell being butthurt? Le'Veon Bell is butthurt about everything. He is constantly irritated and whiny and whatever. Uh, he needs to come out and show it this year. Uh, bottom line, like uh, Adam Gase is the coach there, um, you know, and he he didn't want Le'Veon Bell. So if you got a situation like that, you need to come out and prove it. Like his contract, he can be cut. You know, he's got a he's got a lot of guaranteed money and whatnot, but it it's not as much as it would be if he stays there for the full four years. And I know he wants to get paid again. So it, I, Le'Veon Bell drives me insane. 